Thank you. So by a quick show of hands, how many of us recognize that sound that I just played? Of course, we all do. It's the delightful notification sound. In fact, we can't do without them. 10 minutes go by, no notification on your phones. You start wondering if all your friends are dead. <laughs> it's all about the dopamine. Studies show that when we get notifications on our devices, it triggers the release of chemicals like dopamine, serotonin, and oxytocin. According to Merriam-Webster, these chemicals are created from dopa. They're compounds that are created from dopa, and they act as neurotransmitters from the neurons of the brain. In layman's terms, they are the happy chemicals of the brain, and they're connected to the reward-motivated behavior and the excitement found in human beings. We get similar feelings when we eat chocolate, when we, when we eat chocolate, play video games, or even when we fall in love. Today, I'll be showing you how I have turned the release of dopamine into my advantage, and how I have turned a very boring work, as a lot of people think, coding, into a dopamine trigger, and how I've turned a somewhat tedious process of learning new things into my passion. I'm Abdul Samad Ali, I'm a 17-year-old computer programmer from Nigeria, and I'm a second-year student at Cyprus International University studying computer engineering. I grew up in a very small town in northern Nigeria, where access to internet and electricity was very limited. And if you couldn't tell already by the strike, striking resemblance, that was me as a kid. I love toys. <laughs> Six years ago, my dad had this old, clunky desktop computer in his office that he had this old desktop computer in his office that I always loved going to to play games after school. I loved going to his office every day after school. Soon after, the computer was moved to the house, and it meant one important thing, more games every day. Some of my favorites were Minesweeper and Space Cadet, or the pinball game, as I used to call it. Not long after that, a year goes by, and I get my first personal computer as a gift on my 12th birthday. I was overfilled with joy as I couldn't wait to get more games on it. I got more games, and I played every day after school. I couldn't wait to get home from school every day just to play games. But as time went on, I got bored, and I started wondering how games were made. So I scarred the internet on my quest to learn how to make games, and I came across Batch my first programming language. Batch is a scripting language built by Microsoft that allows you to enter commands into a text file and run them on your computer. My first program, however, wasn't a simple Hello World program, classic. It was, in fact, a Batch script that I had copied from the internet to print green random characters to the screen to give the effect from the movie Matrix, which still is my favorite movie of all time. It didn't do much, it just printed random green characters to the screen. But that was one of the most surreal feelings that I've ever had. I copied batch code from the internet on many occasions, and I tried to figure out how they worked. That's how I started learning how to code. At this time, my passion for coding hadn't been kindled enough, and I found it very difficult to learn. I wanted to quit. But I didn't really enjoy doing what other kids my age would. I certainly didn't enjoy going out to play with other kids. The thing is, I've always done well with computers than people. Because I spend most of my time with computers because when something goes wrong with a computer, you get an error message. When something goes wrong with a person, you get feelings. Like, how am I supposed to interpret that? <laughs> so I was an introvert and I was a shy kid. But I really had nothing to do with my time, nothing better to do with my time. And I also wanted to prove my mates wrong, who thought that I was lame. And I wanted to see the looks on their faces whenever I told them that I built a game. I remember building a text-based adventure game and showing it to my dad. And I could remember clearly what he said to me. He said, you're going places. I'm proud of you, my son. And that changed my life. What he said kept me going, even when I wanted to quit, even when programming was difficult and I wanted to drop it. 
I had nothing to lose if I continued learning how to code, even if I failed at it. At age 13, I came across this Harvard course called CS50. It was an introduction to computer science course and programming. And I took the course and it changed the way that I thought about everything. It gave me a new way of solving problems by breaking them down into smaller problems. But the problem with me was that I felt like I still didn't know enough to be able to, cool, to build cool stuff. I felt like I always needed that tiny little bit of extra knowledge to be able to build what I thought was cool. So I continued learning all that I could, reading books, taking online courses with fears that I still do not know enough, and because it gave me some sort of easy intellectual satisfaction. I had turned 14. I had a, a very large and insatiable curiosity, and I filled that curiosity by taking things apart. I wanted to learn how things work, and I took them apart. Soon after that, as you can tell, all my toys were in a disassembled state. Every new toy that I got was something like this. <laughs> Please don't do that if you have African parents. <laughs> <laughs> But I had a good excuse. I wanted to learn how these things worked, and I had to go into them and see how they actually worked. Not long after that, I grew to the age of 14. I needed a constant source of excitement, and that came to me easily by stimulating my brain. Do not get me wrong, though. In this time, I took on projects that only had to do with what I had already known. So that way, I won't have the fear that I still needed to learn more to be able to build anything. I built a really cool computer-based testing system for schools in my local area, and I was proud of it. I'm still proud of it. So I started learning how to do new things. I started taking on overly ambitious projects, projects that had little to do with what I had already known. This gave me the opportunity to step way outside my comfort zone, and it led to greater things. At this point in my life, things were very difficult. I had a lot of sleepless nights, nights that I would go to bed at 3 a.m., and I'll still have to wake up as early as 7 a.m. just to go to school. My parents figured out that I wasn't having enough sleep, and they would come to check on me after midnight, and I would always run from my desk to my bed whenever I heard their footsteps and pretend like I was sleeping. Well, I later got busted, and it wasn't funny. <laughs> it wasn't funny at all. <laughs> so they, they were actually supportive to my surprise, and they helped me through everything. In this period, I ventured into artificial intelligence, which is a branch of computer science that deals with building systems that can learn to think on their own and make decisions on their own. One of the cool projects that I built was this artificially intelligent program that can learn to play the game of tic-tac-toe and beat any human. I also dipped my toes a bit into robotics, and I came up with this, which is a self-driving car that uses an ultrasonic sensor to find its way around obstacles. I also built Screminder. It was one of the first apps that I actually built and released. It was a simple idea. I joined screenshots with reminders, so you can take a screenshot on your phone and turn it into a reminder. It didn't do much, but by the time that I had already taken very ambitious projects, I woke up every single day with a smile on my face and a feeling that I am taking over the world every single line of code at a time. The dopamine level was crazy. I was so riled up every single day when I went to school. As time went on, I became 16. I joined Sugar Labs, and I volunteered as a software developer for Sugar Labs. Sugar Labs is an open source organization that deals with building free educational software for kids around the world. And at Sugar Labs, I have had the opportunity to learn new stuff, build a lot of cool stuff, and also meet amazingly smart people. I've also had the chance to mentor upcoming programmers in events like Google Code In and Google Summer of Code. Recently, I started my own software development agency where we only take on projects 
that challenge us intellectually and allow us to learn new things. Recently, we built an app that is currently in use in the US and California to be specific. The app helps you find parking spaces. It's called Driveway. I also started Subwork, which is a company me and a few co-founders started to help on-demand service providers easily find clients on the map interface. At Subwork, I work on the interface, I work on the iOS app that allows on-demand service providers to find clients on, their, on the map. It's basically like Google Maps. I also started creating my own podcast where I bring on self-taught programmers to talk about their journey in learning how to code. And I'm also creating my own online course where I teach people how to code. Now, there are times in your life where you feel like you can't do anything and the dopamine level isn't just there anymore. Times where you'll be in a very dark place. Taking you back to the time that I wanted to quit coding and nothing else mattered. But most times, all you need is just something to pull you back in your zone and tell you and remind you that you've got this. For me, it was the people around me, especially my family, for always pushing me to do things and always reminding me that they are proud of me. A more recent example was the passing of my mom three months ago. Although it's hard, but that thing that pulls me back in my zone and reminds me that I've got this is following my passion, solving problems through programming, teaching people how to program. And the dopamine gives me an escape from this harsh reality. Now, people say being overly ambitious is a curse, but for me, it has always been more of a blessing. Ladies and gentlemen, please do not stop seeking knowledge, for true pleasure does not come in fulfillment, but in constant pursuit. Thank you.